megawatts of offshore wind in our country by the year 2030. It begins here in New Bedford. It begins here in Massachusetts. That's who we are. The offshore wind workforce will power our electric grid, charge up our local communities, jumpstart our clean and climate safe economy. So we thank you so much again to Bristol Community College. Uh, we know the commitment that you have to diversity. We know the commitment you have to equity. We know that you want to ensure that there is a full participation of all communities of color in this incredible job creation revolution that is taking place and being led from here. And we appreciate the incredible leadership which are showing on these issues and we have to make sure that all of the funding which we provide from the federal government as well is tied to that goal of inclusivity. We can save all of creation by engaging in massive job creation, by engaging in union job creation, but we have to make sure that every community is included. So let me stop there and, uh, uh, and thank all of you, uh, and, uh, and to thank my partners, uh, not just uh, uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this day, uh, but in the legislation which we're working on down in Washington. Uh, we were successful in December of adding a 30% tax break for the offshore wind industry for the next five years. And we were able to get that passed in December of 2020. That was not on the scoreboard. Uh, in Jan on December 1st of, of, uh, of 2020, but that 30% tax break is sending a powerful message to every wind uh, company in the world that the United States and the veteran and Massachusetts are the place to go. And so we're going to work to extend that tax break uh, to make it even longer uh, in the deliberations which are about to unfold over the next five weeks down in Washington. And in partnership with that almost guaranteed incentive to build, we're going to need training. That's why we're here. And that's why uh, my great partner, uh, Bill Keating, uh, is um, um, is uh, here, uh, a great leader on this issue, partnering with uh, Congressman Auchincloss as well, uh, so that we get the legislation passed that makes it possible for the veteran to be this great leader. I give you my great partner and friend, Bill Keating. Thank you, Senator, and uh, welcome all. Uh, I'm President uh, and your board, Congratulations on the work you're doing here. Uh, it's, it's really a game changer. Mayor Mitchell, uh, who's been steadfast and relentless in his support uh, of offshore wind. Uh, it's a day I think we'll look back on today where uh, New Bedford is noted for so many different things, uh, regionally, nationally, will also uh, be uh, well known internationally uh, as a center for the work we're doing here. And that'll be New Bedford, Fall River, our south coast uh, and the region beyond will all be parts with that. Uh, Senator Markey, who uh, I would say is the Paul Revere in Congress, uh, who's for th over three decades uh, spreading the warning to all of us of the existential threat of climate change in the environment, and is truly looked upon uh, as the environmental uh, member of the Senate. He was in the Congress and continues that work uh, and great passion, as we all know. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back, uh, I've been working on these issues for over a decade. It's been a primary area of concern. And, and today brings forth so many aspects of what my focus has been on that. Uh, and it's a, a focus that deals with the international side and how important that is to get us going here. Um, a few years ago, I was in Europe and we had a meeting you know, while we were there at a conference with the CEOs, the biggest CEOs, the biggest companies in Europe. And a lot of them uh, that were attracted to, to go to that meeting uh, were countries that wanted to invest, companies rather, that wanted to invest in wind. And so at the course of the meeting, I asked them, I said, what is, would be the greatest incentive we could do to provide greater investment and get this industry going in the United States to a far greater extent? Uh, is it the tax structure? Uh, is it the regulations? Uh, 
Is it the uncertainty in getting capital because of Cape Wind and other things that came before where that uncertainty unfortunately hurt investment? And to a person, they said, well, those things are important, but that's not the reason we're not investing more. Uh, in the United States and in offshore wind. And I said, what is that reason? He said, it's, it's clearly, you need an educated, trained workforce. That's what you have to have. And then we'll invest in the money and the growth will come. You don't have that now. But that's what we're here today talking about. Not talking theoretically, but actually doing it and starting it uh, going forward. So that's the importance of what we're talking about today. Uh, it couldn't be more critical if we're gonna succeed in this country. Now, what does that mean in terms of jobs? Well, uh, it's been forecast by the Biden administration and others that in just a little over eight years, it's not a long time frame since uh, we haven't even begun uh, the actual breaking of the ground yet, uh, there'll be 44,000 direct jobs uh, from the offshore wind industry in our country, just in that time frame where this is just beginning to take off. And there'll be 33,000 estimated uh, community-based jobs that go with those jobs. And what does it mean in terms of uh, dealing with our energy need? They're forecasting just in a little over eight years again, over 10 million homes can be totally funded for their energy needs with these projects. That's enormous. What does that translate to? 78 million metric tons uh, of CO2 rejection. So it's amazing on all fronts, just in this next few years to come forward, the impact this is gonna have. And those jobs, and I think we'll have an announcement or some things forecast just in the next few days, uh, will be great jobs, uh, good paying jobs, uh, career jobs, jobs with a great future, and union jobs. And we're gonna see that take place. And we're gonna make sure we do everything we can do here with the help of mayor, counselors, legislators uh, that are here, uh, that have been great supporters uh, of offshore wind and all the way from the terminal uh, forward, investing and, and supporting what's happening down here. Uh, we're gonna be in a position where we move this forward uh, and, and we're gonna see this be the real center uh, of where we're going. So as we go forward from today, uh, we've had discussions and uh, Mayor and I many times have said, we keep telling you it's coming pretty soon, they'll believe us. <laughs> well, it's here. Uh, and this core ingredient is heat. Uh, and Bedford is a terrific place called River. Uh, and, and then the educational institutions that Bristol is partnering with, all the way from the plans firm, uh, having high schools, to four-year colleges be part of a continuum, depending where people want to go. And people will have that chance. These aren't jobs that uh, have a short shelf life. These are career jobs. These are jobs that will be ongoing. These are jobs that need constant retraining for safety and professional purposes. And this institute here it is going to be uh, the epicenter of that in our region. You'll be you're breaking new ground here. The other parts of the country will be looking at what happens here, what, what you've done, what the successes are. And indeed, that European partnership is there with your training, your parents, uh, uh, you know, as part of the training at Denmark uh, Institute. So it's there. Uh, and at the end of this month, I'll be having a hearing uh, that I chair uh, dealing with uh, global environment and global energy issues uh, in Europe as part of the base of that committee. And we're gonna be bringing in uh, Europe Wind and, and the leaders from American Wind to that hearing, as well as uh, Vineyard and Wind. Mayflower uh, will come for another hearing, I guess. Uh, but we're gonna do those things, and it marks the reality of us going forward. Uh, we're partners, uh, Senator Markey, Representative Paul Kinkloss and myself, in trying to provide the resources to help build this. Uh, and now, with a real uh, foundation being laid here, uh, you're going to make our job easier, I think. Although there's nothing easy in this Congress. <laughs> but we're all working together 
to try and get uh, funding for training, uh, for construction. It, doesn't, it may not be all in one package because that's hard to navigate through our system, but we're going to be persistent in dealing with it. Uh, and I have a great partner in the House uh, who's joined us this term, who has uh, made this one of his priorities. Uh, one of our first discussions we had was on this issue. Uh, he's joined with me in the complementary legislation on the House side that Senator Markey talked about uh, in terms of offshore wind, uh, something we advanced last year uh, and we hope to advance in both branches this year and get done. Uh, so there's resources for more resources for the educational training. And he's been someone that understands the significance in so many ways to our region in giving uh, people, not just young people, but people going through uh, life change, retraining, job displacement, uh, people from all communities, uh, all backgrounds, uh, gender, race, just making sure that we have a good, solid diversification here uh, to give people their chance at the American dream. So I'm reminded uh, of the movie Field of Dreams when I look at today and what we're doing and what the, these uh, CEOs in Europe told me we had to do in the U.S. to be successful. We're building it. We're building that foundation for this plan. And the quote that we all know from that movie is this, build it and they will come. Well, the, the capital investment will come, the, the local jobs will come, and a cleaner environment will come. Uh, so uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague. Uh, we share Fall River together. We share our priorities in this together. And, and someone who really, uh, trust me, made this one of his biggest priorities uh, in his uh, uh, first congressional year. Representative Jay Gawker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the, the warm introduction from my friend and colleague, uh, Representative Keating, and from the leadership at Senator Markey. The, the Paul Revere of climate, I like that, has been with for decades, uh, as well as Mayor Mitchell and President Douglas. I, as we were doing this tour and we were hearing about the curriculum and the training and I was, as I was visualizing the pool there and looking at the photograph of the water safety training, I was getting some tingles down my spine, thinking back to my time in amphibious reconnaissance in the Marine Corps. That's an entirely water-based training regimen in the Marines. I spent six months going to the pool every day doing controlled drownings. I used to have nightmares about it every morning. I tell you, it's more fun to walk through as a member of Congress than it's going to be to do as a, as a delegate. Uh, but to run these kinds of programs, these programs that have the highest standards for safety and technical training in the water, you need highly professional instructors and a highly trusted institution, and that's what Bristol Community College and the National Offshore Wind Institute are going to be able to provide. They are really the nucleus of this industry because they're going to provide the training and the certification that allows industries to invest with confidence. It's tremendously exciting uh, to, to see here and to visualize with them, but we'll be here very shortly. I want to take a moment here to recognize somebody who I think has had a really profound impact on this for, for decades now, and that's Jen Menard, a VP at Bristol Community College. Back when George W. Bush was president, Jen was raising her hand and saying, Southeastern Massachusetts can and should be the center of the offshore wind revolution in the United States, and really I want to recognize her leadership in doing that. I know everybody here has been a part of this. Uh, Jen, I'm not sure you get enough credit for what you've done for this, so thank you. This is going to be a generational investment and a generational hub in clean energy and an economic development for southeastern Massachusetts. And I, along with, with my partners in federal, state, and local government, as well as in education and nonprofit, am committed to continuing to provide the financial support, of course, but also the political support to make, this, uh, to make this a hub in Massachusetts going forward for a clean energy revolution. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank our congressional delegation for coming together uh, during their recess at a very uh, a time when they want to be with family and friends making time out of their very busy schedule to come here to New Bedford. I also want to thank our, our wonderful mayor, John Mitchell, uh, our board of trustees represented today by Joan and Steve, and our wonderful foundation represented today by Tom and Tony. Thank you so much. 
And uh, this concludes our formal program, but if you'd like to stay around and ask some questions, we'll be here for a little bit. And uh, for those of you who are still not convinced, offshore wind is real. It is very, very real. And today really kicks off uh, a great adventure as we build uh, a wonderful industry here in southeastern Massachusetts. So thank you everyone for coming, and I hope to see you again right here at the National Offshore Wind Institute or...